Welcome to Phil John's VIP. I'm your host, Phil John. I've been having some tech technical difficulties tonight, but I'm, I don't I don't want to even go into my, you know, uh, introduction until I make sure that my guest gets on okay. So we're going to see if I can bring my guest on. Uh, let's see what happens here. I'm excited. Um, let's see what's going on here. Let me see. Here we go. Uh, I see Lisa, where you at? Lisa, where you at? Oh, I got nervous. I got nervous. Like now, I feel like I gotta start. I gotta start all over again. So I am your host, Phil John. Welcome to Phil, Phil John's VIP on a Wednesday night. I am so excited tonight because I am bringing to you Miss Lisa Hopkins. She is a dancer who has traveled the world and has backed up some very iconic music acts and her special assignment and her baby, Hilly Arts Dance Studio, where she inspires and nurtures and cultivates new talent and education in the performing arts. So without further ado, I want to present to you tonight the talented, the exceptionally gracious Lisa Hopkins. Are you Thank you for having me. Good. Is the sound I'm on? <laughs> I'm telling you, sometimes it gets a little rough. It gets a little rough, man. So did the screen was just going to black? Yeah, the screen was going to black like when uh you uh when you uh would connect on from my studio page i couldn't see or hear anything so this is way better That's so weird man well listen thank you for joining me um i think I, I i went through my introduction a few times so but what i was telling the people was that i said i've known you for a very very long time and uh i felt like you you know dancing has always been the thing that you've done it's always been your passion um exactly what was it for you that started you in that path like what was it for you that said this is something that i want to do and i want this to be a part of my journey as a young girl my mom would always put us in activities and dance happened to be one of the activities there are five of us and i was the one that i guess it stuck with because i'm the one that continued with it but the part that i realized that it was for me was I think my first real big production on stage, I was about the age of 10. And um, that's when I realized that this was something I wanted to do. What was the production? So I went to a dance school uh, as a young girl, one of many, uh, but this specific dance school was Bernie's Johnson in Queens. And our show was in um, uh, the big um, Lincoln Center was where that show was, and it was just the lights, the amount of people, what it felt like being on stage at that young age. That was what catapulted me to know I wanted to continue. Now, career-wise, you went from it studying as a little girl, but then as you got older, was there any kind of formal training? And how did that kind of segue into you kind of being a part of hip hop culture now that we're celebrating hip hop at, at, at 50. Yeah, um, okay, so hip hop, which is interesting. Uh, hip hop and I are the same age and uh, <laughs> proud to be 50. But um, it was weird because I, back when I was coming through the ranks, there was no formal training in hip hop. You were outside with your friends uh they would teach you what they knew you would teach them what you knew i knew nothing about hip-hop but i had a relative who had older siblings and she would come home after going out to parties with her siblings because i was not allowed hey professor um but i was not allowed to be at parties and she would come back and she started to teach me things that she was learning um very iconic people were in those parties at the time. Um, some of you may know, uh, like uh, Buddha Stretch, the Mop Top Crew, they call themselves, um, or they were elite for us. Uh, Shake 
who recently passed away, but he was one as well. Mm -hmm. She would come back and teach me all of those steps. I never knew one day I'd be on the stage doing those same things from a hobby. What were what were some of the uh, some of the acts that you worked with? Ooh, uh, um, back then Mercury Records had hired me as well as RCA. So any act that came through for them, my very first audition, and which threw me into a plethora of wonderful things. Um, I did a lot of soundtrack tours. Most of my shows were live, but my first audition was. I didn't even know where I was going. My studio owner, my dance studio teacher, came and gave me a piece of paper. She received a call from one of my dance sisters and said, go to this audition tomorrow. I showed up, there were about 2,000 girls there. They only needed like six. And um, they let me know that I landed the gig. Now, obviously, this was my first gig. I never knew anything about gigging as they call it back then and i found out the next day at rehearsal um that it was for the grammy awards for ll so it was like i got thrown into the fire um immediately and it was one of the best that was my favorite experience of all times um but most live shows but why it's a super fest they don't do that anymore oh, I remember that. Uh, you do I'm right <laughs> yeah right going back back um but those were really good times um my other favorite choreographer that i worked with who did a lot of uh, placing with me was um her name is robin dunn and back then she she's still very prominent in, in the industry now but she was a very big part of my uh, dance career as well um i also danced for mtv back then they had something called street party where I was like ongoing back at that time, and I owed that to. There was another dancer back in the, those time frames named Donovan. They called him the dancer. Mm -hmm. He was pretty big back then, um, and he was um, also a big staple in helping me get through the ranks of um, big big gigs that I did get. You know what's interesting? I, I remember I remember back in those days when um, uh, kind of like. I would have to say where when hip hop was kind of like in its adolescent phase, right? Where, you know, I felt like people kind of just it, the the raw talent was just kind of kind of pulled out from Queens, Brooklyn, um, Harlem, and would you have ever thought that now in 2023 that it would be or that movement would be as iconic as it has become, historical even? never as big as it is now um back then uh, even when i went on those auditions my mother she was like this is not going to be something that's going to take you anywhere why would you want to keep going in that direction and look where it's at you know did you dance in a real love video i wish i, ha I wasn't in the industry just yet before that well maybe i was wait a minute maybe i was I give my my timetable timetable for <laughs> but I wasn't. But a lot of my friends were in that video. Um, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. Shout out to Jen. Jen is that's my girl. Yeah, yeah. It's my trying to get in touch with me. Um. So here's the here's one one thing one thing that you and I talked about earlier today, um, because we did speak earlier today, uh, was about the raw talent that was in uh new york city at that time and of course you know a lot of cities are going through gentrification and just a total kind of like makeover but what do you think it was about that time that just where it was like just a like a incubator for just talent i feel like our season or our generation back then we were very hungry and i feel like our hunger came from a position of wanting to perform um and it was like you had to honestly bring your best so back then um even like females back then were not like they they had we had to keep up with the men mm. um so even dancing hip-hop as i went along in the ranks i you know got a uh 
came into a group of guys who were dancing called Quiet Storm, and one of the dancers in that group was a guy named Excel. That dancing cat is his name, but he taught me, get your signature move. So there was a, a step called like a, a double jack leg. It's where your legs go up and you come. I, I, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it, but I was one girl of few who could right. do that. And he said, learn that move every audition. You're going to stand out. So it pretty much was that competition for us back then was that thick. We were going up against girls and guys. And it's a little different nowadays, I feel, because I just don't feel like dance is really showcasing the true talent that really lies within us um, as dancers. I think it's kind of relying on the seduction of dance, which I think everything has its place. But I think in hip hop, it's missing that, that hunger that we had. We would be on lines out in the street ready to go the whole time on six hour auditions. I was talking to, a, I had the opportunity to speak to Big Les about a year or so ago. And she uh, has always been like a powerhouse in the dance world. And I just found like it was, there was a toughness that you all had where I feel like you had it almost like when you guys danced, it, it, it embodied um, not only just dance, but gymnastics. Um, and it was almost like you had to come out fighting because you yes. had to dance just as hard as the guys were like. Sure did. There was no, uh, they wear like leotards now on stage, which is all body, you know, and we didn't have that, you know, that was, your body didn't matter. You had to have yeah. more talent. Yeah. So, so what, what do you think, um, what do you think is missing now? What do you think is missing now? now as opposed to back then as far as getting the 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 inspiration and the hunger for has is it social media is it technology is it a distraction of other things what is it that you think is missing i feel like that we are distracted from likes comments and shares as opposed to what the organic nature of dance is so if you're putting out what really is the, at the fundamentals of dance. That's not grabbing people. Um, people want to know what's popular, what's now. The latest, I think, I feel like TikTok is reducing dance. Um, that might be, you know, a couple of fighting words after that. Yeah, but yeah. I do feel like TikTok has watered down dance. And I don't think it's bad because I think dance is for everyone but it doesn't define what the real true art that dancers, the training that we go through in order to, you know, get that. Just like Les said, she's right. We, you had to be, it was, you had to be on your game. Nowadays you do a, one of these kind of moves and now you're hot. <laughs> and how, right. how, how do we prepare for that? And I think it was, um, if I pronounce his name right, Usain Bolt. Um, he's got a phrase that I love. He says, I trained for four years, I believe it was the time frame, for that one moment that he was in that race. Mm -hmm. And that is like, so that's true about like all of the arts, especially the one that I know of, of dance. You will train forever for a three minute piece on stage. And I don't feel like they're doing it like that anymore. I don't believe that a lot of people want to put in the commitment. I think that because of social media, people feel like if they see it, they can do it. You know, um, I think that the thing that I miss is that hunger of even as an actor being able to go out and pick up backstage and go through the paper and figure out, you know, what type I am and go through, you know, the um, we used to have sheets with casting directors and agents and mailing headshots out. And it was like, and you kind of felt like you was in this little bubble that nobody else understood but you. Yeah, people that was in you, you know, and now I feel like with social media and being able to broadcast whatever it is you want to on on the internet, that it people feel like it's just it's so easily attainable. And what happens is that it loses, it loses its 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 its, its potency. Totally agree. Yeah. So let let me ask you this: What made you start Hilly Arts? I know that's that's your baby. 
you know so what was it that made you want to give back and start to nurture and train and cultivate new talent so i was teaching for the for a long time before i actually started hilly arts um i taught in pretty much all of the big dance schools in queens shout out to iso to devore um intervisions those are some of the studios that i had i loved working with in queens I also taught in quite a few places in long island and there's a special group to me that i taught that we were in hempstead and that group uh was with them for about 15 years and those kids would always say you have your own you know your own it's something about it and they just kept saying that to me and an opportunity came where it just made sense to begin my own as opposed to working with other schools which was great to work with other schools because you know you get your feet really wet but that specific group what I saw come out of that group a bunch of strong dancers and I said I got to be able to do this so I had to step out on faith because running a dance school is different than teaching a dance school um, I can definitely teach a school easy the business aspect is very different I went all the way to school grad school for business I tell you there's nothing like on the job training because you can have a grad school degree in business but hit areas in your own entrepreneurial journey that so the outcome of the children who I still see and speak to to this day seeing this just how the arts have impacted them and now I'm teaching some of their children and um, that's what made me jump out and continue because it makes a difference it made a difference in my life it made a big difference in my life and so I always wanted to give back so what 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 are some of those notable moments that you remember throughout your uh, history throughout the history of Hilly Yards what are some of those accomplishments that you remember one of the the biggest accomplishments that I remembered that changed my life, that same group that I said I had in Long Island, we were going to dance competitions. Um, I, uh, how do I say this? Well, we were the only minority group in a sea of you follow right. other minority, uh, other uh, nationalities. We, I, I'm the person who will defy all odds and my dances have to have a purpose behind them. If you ever go on YouTube, on Hilly Arts YouTube, you look up, um, my goodness, what is the name of that piece? It's called Shadowland. And this piece was showing how blacks were caught into captivity of slaves and how it broke down our community, literally. So we went on stage with that piece. Wow. And you can't imagine now my dancers were being called like it's a caddy world in the competition world so we would get up early and go get our dressing room now if the other studios who would get to those dressing rooms would get there after us they called our kids things like monkeys and you know it's hard to have a group of kids where they're ready to you know correct these people i'm sure but i had to you know keep them you know, I had to maintain because what's it going to get us? You know, yeah. let's go do our job on that stage. Those kids did their job. Or did they do their job on stage? We left with the overall win with an a audience of white people. I want to say it had to be about 2,000, 3,000. I want to say people in that audience and our kids won. And that was, for me, one of the biggest life-changing moments I've seen where I've learned that always go with my gut, go outside the box. This, this lesson that they gave, the judges will speak to you afterwards. They were moved in tears. Something you have to see. It's on social media. I mean, on uh, YouTube. But and it's called them Sh seeing that. And it's called Shadowland called Shadowland, I believe I named it that, that okay. um, but it, it definitely, it definitely was big, I, but there's, there's so I'm many sorry. pieces. I, I, someone mm -hmm. just said they were called monkeys by people that didn't know that they were beasts. Yeah. You know, 
feast on the dance floor, you know. They were. Unmatched. And let me tell you, these kids were trained in that discipline. It was strictly yeah. me. Like, I would be, I was, I want to say, was I expecting my twins at that? No, I wasn't. Um, but we would be outside. Um, I would be, it didn't matter, birthdays, uh, anything. I was in that dance school with those kids. They were committed. The commitment was amazing. And they they showed on stage how all that commitment that we're talking about that people don't want to do now, they showed it paid off. There goes one of them now. That's right. We came, we saw you definitely, absolutely, forever. But that will always remain in my heart. Yep. But what, what drives you? What, what, what keeps you committed to the kids? What keeps me committed to the children or even those who are adults now, yeah. we all we all go through our own struggles. You never know who what people are going through. Um I as a young girl I had a dance teacher who was really hardcore on me and our and our whole group. She didn't know that um I came in one day to dance school late and I was kind of shuffling around and trying to get myself together. And she yelled so hard at me. You know, that's just the dance world, to be honest with you. She didn't know that in my house, unfortunately, at the time, you know, at the time my dad uh, was alive, but my dad passed away from overdose of drugs. But in my household, this is what I was seeing. So dance was my outlet. And I always knew how dance was like that lifesaver, where it was an escape from where I was. So Coming into adulthood and teaching, I had a lot of kids who could relate. I had um, a lot of kids who went through things where a relative put their hands on them, and this was their way out. And so we did a lot of bonding, the kids and I. We would have, like, conversations outside of dance because I feel like dance starts here. Mm -hmm. And so they had to gain trust. So what keeps kept me motivated? still keeps me motivated is I know what the results uh, bring to bring like something that these kids can pour into their their art to get rid of uh, the stress which you do carry in your heart you carry it in your your cells your your, your vibrations um, that's a big thing for me so my studio allowed me to give back um release sorry my inhibitions, everything. And that was my goal. If I can give at least one child what I had, then I did my job. Amen. Amen to that. And I, and, and, I, and I myself can relate to that story because I think that the arts uh, is a great creative outlet to be able to express everything that you feel inside in creative ways that will help unlock and free other people, you know? So I think that's one of the beautiful thing about performing arts. And I, and, I, and I hate that people devalue it the way that they do because I, it's so important, you know, um, whether it's writing, dancing, you know, theater, music, you know, it, it's, it's a creative outlet and, you know, it, it, it's freedom for a lot of people, you know. So, you know, I applaud your efforts in that. So where, 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 where's, where where are we going now? You know, what where is the school now? And what what do we have to look forward to? Hilly Arts is in Freeport. Um Freeport, New York. Um what we have to look forward to. Same same my, my passion is the same. Uh actually right now I'm working with a group of adult women. Um, I'm working with all ages. Let me just back that up. But the group that I'm focused on right now, their project adult women. I have one of the adults in my class. First daughter passed away uh, from a complication. I think she was about one. Had a second daughter. Second daughter caught cancer at the age of like four. And the amount of stress that this mom is going, going through. So we're getting ready to tell her story in hopes to help bring more light to her daughter's foundation, the first daughter who passed away, as well as the foundation for the one who has cancer. So that's where I'm headed with that part. Um, I'm always ready to take on any project 
that comes, you know, as long as it comes with a lesson, good or bad, uh, Hilly Arts will, will be going there. Um, but I also train like other studios, other teams. It's, I don't have a roof over my head. <laughs> Any recitals coming up that we should know about? So there, there will be a recital coming up. Um, I don't have the date just yet. Uh, this is pretty early in my dance season, but I'll be sure to give you an update on the recital. Um, my wish right now, if I could throw it out in the air, I need a group of men again. I had a group of men before, and I want to work with a piece on men's health, uh, mental health. And I've Dancers. done it before dancing and they don't have to be trained dancers that group that won that big trophy the big competition had about four or five men only one of them with well, maybe two two or three were trained but not quite fully trained but there were wrestlers um track runners uh football players they just came to dance and they actually came to dance because some of them had girlfriends in the school, and that was what their way of bonding was. <laughs> so, we, I got them, all right. <laughs> they were like on that stage, and you would never know that some of them were not trained dancers. That's awesome, man. Yeah, That's, I'm looking forward to seeing them that come to fruition and seeing what the outcome yeah. is. That yeah. you feel me? Yeah. I would like to see the final cut. You know what I mean? So I would love to see the outcome of that. So moving forward, I have five questions that I ask all my guests that come on to my show. And you okay. feel free to ask, answer them however you like to answer them, okay? okay. So, uh, and you can take your time. You don't gotta answer so quickly. But it's just, you know, something I like to try out. So let's first thing. What do you know about the industry now that you thought you, the, that you thought you knew it was before you got in? So what do you know now? opposed to what you thought it was going in? Oh. I will say that, oh, <laughs> that's a loaded question. I feel <laughs> that the industry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that the industry, oh, I feel it's rigged. <laughs> I don't feel like it's built for those who have real talent. I used to think that, that it was, but I don't think so. We have, uh, I won't give names because I don't like to promote. Um, you have artists nowadays who are pretty much talking about all genitalia. Maybe you guys can figure out what I mean. Um, so the industry does not care about anything with real talent all it cares is i feel like right now it's geared toward the defamation of black and brown people and i didn't think that it was like that before but i do feel like it is now yeah i think you know i, I felt like even even in all as, aspects of the arts i think that um the time that we grew up you really had to have talent to earn your spot there, there was there was no going around that, you know, and uh, a lot of people don't understand what we mean by that, but it, it's 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 different. For me, it was it was understanding that uh, and I and I and I think I said this to you earlier, but and I've said this a thousand times also on my show is that there is no there, you know, it's only here. It's only now the present moment. You know, we're trying to work so many people destroy relationships because they're trying to beat somebody to the finish line. The finish line doesn't exist. It's about pacing okay. yourself one step at a time. So my next question, what advice would you give your 19 year old self? If it's not going to matter in about a year or so, then let it go. I like that. Yes. Yes. If it's not going to matter within a year, let it go. You ever think about how long, especially 19, I would sit and I think, you know, people create a hell in their mind mm -hmm. and maybe something that didn't go the way my 
you should not call it was because sometimes at 19 you don't sit in reality no and sometimes you sit on something that's not it doesn't matter like if you were to pass away if you knew you were going to pass away in 10 days how would you spend your time yeah. if this won't matter then it shouldn't matter now yeah amen to that yeah what would you like your legacy to be i would love I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna speak it as if this is what it is, because that's my belief. My legacy is uh, going to be and is a legacy of impact. That's huge for me. That I positively impact people that are around me, that are near me. Um, I live that, that every day. I pass people. I try to say hello. That's an impact to me. Um, you and I were speaking about growing up in the hood uh, earlier today, and a lot of times in our neighborhood, we don't know to give each other positive um, energy and vibe. So my impact, my eulogy, whenever it's spoken, written, what my obituary, all of that is going to say, I left a positive mark, and I made an impact. What brings you joy? And people excel. That that brings me joy. I um, feel like when the world around us and everyone is rising at the same time, and I know it sounds corny, but that's really what I feel like. I have um, friends who, like, let's say if I have a friend who's overweight or doesn't feel good about themselves, I'm going to, I'm just naturally that person. I want to know what I can do to bring that person to where they feel better because I feel like we function better like, that, you know, where we're not worrying about those kind of things. So my favorite African, African proverb is uh, fighters united can web down a lion. So if you think about that, one spider can't do it and spiders separate can't do it. But if they come together, they're more powerful. So what brings me joy? is seeing people around me excelling. That helps me, helps me to excel. And I ride that vibration with people and I try to bring people up with me. What are you grateful for? Mm. A lot. Um, I'm honestly grateful for my mother. Um, I think that the, the foundation of my mindset came from my mother. She is 100% the, the push behind me when she doesn't even know she's pushing. She never let me ever get into a position as a little girl, feeling sorry for myself, never. She would always tell me her favorite line, gird up your loins. <laughs> and I, I hated it back then. And I used to, you know, that's another thing I would tell my 19-year-old self, See your mom for who she really is, but yeah. I didn't get it back then. Um, but as I got older and I saw the tools that I really had, priceless. So I'm grateful for my mom. I'm grateful for understanding that gratitude brings more to you as opposed to the opposite. So yes. I, I believe even you cannot be prepared to go to happy, you have to be happy going to happy yeah. so you have to always just like we said earlier the time is always now yesterday is gone you never get to tomorrow you're always right here and so if you maintain gratitude where you are so many things just won't hit you the same way and you start counting i understand what counting your blessings really does it starts letting you see that that 10 percent that you're looking at that you don't have mm -hmm. is really this big compared to what you really have. Yep, and, and compared to what everyone else may have, or other people may have. Just like you know, for whatever, for however bad you think you may have it, somebody has it worse. So oh yeah, yeah. So it's good to just to be to walk in gratitude and to live in gratitude. Um, has spirituality played a big part in how uh, you have been successful? Yeah. Um, yes, a very, very, very big believer in 
the most high. I have to, I always feel like I will. I, I, I think I pray all day in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it definitely keeps me grounded. I think everybody has to be able to have an accountability. And that's where your, your spirit comes into play, spirituality. It helps your moral um, compass, like has to be pointed towards integrity, quite a few things, but yeah, I do. Spirituality is major for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I, I don't see how people can get through life without it, you know? Um, and I say that because a lot of times when we try to figure it out ourselves, there's certain things that we can't, we can't see through the natural eye, that it's only our spiritual foundation and what we what what you what we choose to call faith is what we which which allows us to release it and let it go, because that's the only way the universe works is if you release it and allow it to work itself out. We're responsible for what we do, but how it comes about is not is not is not we're not responsible for that right. how, how it comes to us. You know, we just believe that it will, but how is up to the universe to to contrive to, to, to make that happen. Can I add on to that? Yeah. I also feel like um, how it comes to us, I agree, you can't control it, but I do believe how it comes to you is still working in your favor, even though it yeah. feels like a burden. Um, sometimes it's just like when you go to the gym and, I mean, sometimes who wants to go? And, you know, lift in those weights and it's like there's pressure put on those muscles and it causes it to rip which that's not a pleasant uh tear or or thought but when you make it past uh that you you are now stronger and that's the same parallel with life if you allow yourself the discipline to get through what we're considering struggle because i no longer see it as something negative I see it as something where it's like it's time for me to level up and let me let me go through it. And the way only way to go get through it is to go through it. So I feel like those struggles that come to us, I know from just my years of living, every struggle I had on the other side of it was always the biggest accomplishment. Uh -huh. So I'm always ready. It, 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 it's easier said than done, but I am it ready. Is, is it but it, it, but it's familiar when it comes yeah you know it, it, easier said than done but you know it's familiar when it comes so when it does come and you got that point of discomfort you're like oh no something's happening so it, it's like getting a charlie horse in the back of your leg like you know it's there it's like ah something's coming i feel it it's coming yeah. and, and you end up because after a while life you know Life teaches you lessons to where it's like this, this. I understand how this works now, you know. And I believe that there's something for me in that, you know. Um, and we've all been in places like that where we, uh, that I, I have been in places where I know that I've had to sit quiet and say and just ask God, like, what is this for? Because I know it's for something, you know. So that's good. Yo, Lisa, let me tell you, I'm so proud of you. I just wanted to honor you. I wanted to take this time to say thank you. I think you are doing a magnificent work. Um, I, I've always, I'm a cheerleader, I'm a fan, I'm a supporter, and I, 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 I wish you much success because I know that you are intentionally doing good by everyone that has crossed your path and people that you are touched and you're going to continue to do it. So those seeds that are planted will just grow and continue to be poured into other people and other people. And for me, that is the biggest and best legacy that you could possibly have. Ooh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Thank, thank you. I receive it all. <laughs> truly, 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 truly. Listen, thank you for joining me. I know it was a kind of a hiccup at first. We had a couple of tough te te technical difficulties, but we did get through it. So I want to say thank you for joining me tonight. I appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad we finally was able to do it, but I do appreciate you being willing and taking the time. And for that, I say thank you. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your audience with me. Um, I hope everyone can 
take a look at Hilly Arts IG, uh, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, these children are amazing. I just feel like I'm blessed to be able to touch so many. I'm a, I'm going to look for Shadowland and I'm gonna post it on uh, on the story so people could go check it out and see what they're doing. You know and. Um, Shadowland and Mary, did you know? If people look for those two, you should shout those Shadowland are, and, and Mary, did you know? Mary, was, did you know? For the holidays, right? It was a holiday. so Mary, did you know? Wasn't for the holidays. That was another piece that I performed. We they performed in a competition that won first place, but uh, it, yeah, <laughs> it, you'll see it. <laughs> it wasn't as deep as Shadowland, but. Mary, did you know, kind of tells the story of Christ. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. Well, I'm going to look forward to it, to checking it out. I'm going to go on to YouTube and check it out. I think you're doing great work. So keep it up, my sister. Thank you. Thank you. Stay blessed always. All right. Take care. Peace and blessings.